Now that we have our rule for taking the derivative of any power function, we'd like to come up with a rule for derivatives of exponential functions. You'll remember, or you'll notice, that we haven't tried one of these yet. Um, and there's a good reason for that, as we'll see. So we'd like a rule for the derivative of b to the x, but this is our first try at differentiating an exponential function. So instead of jumping into the general case, we'll start with a specific example of just f of x equals 2 to the x and see how that goes. So we want to take the derivative of 2 to the x. We can always fall back on our limit definition. So we're taking f of x plus h, which is 2 raised to the x plus h, minus 2 to the x, all over h. And just as with the other examples, now we try to simplify this any way we can. We've got an exponent rule from the very first week that can help us out a little bit here, because we can rewrite 2 to the x times plus h as 2 to the x times 2 to the h minus that 2 to the x. Now you should be asking yourself, what could we do next? We see that we have a common factor of 2 to the x on both of these, so we can factor that out. And in fact, how far can we factor this out? As h is going to 0, is 2 to the x changing at all? And the answer is no. 2 to the x is not changing at all. So 2 to the x is a constant from the point of view of this limit as h goes to 0. So just as we did with our constant multiple rule, where we had a k on the inside and we pulled it all the way out front of the limit, we can do the same thing with this 2 to the x. Because again, from the point of view of this limit operator, h going to 0, it doesn't matter whether we multiply by the 2 to the x on the inside or on the outside. So we can factor this 2 to the x all the way out front. And what's left is this limit as h goes to 0, 2 to the h. When we factor the 2 to the x out of this, we're left with a 1 over h. Now let's look at this limit. <clears throat> as h goes to 0, 2 to the h goes to 1. So the top of the fraction is going to 1, and so is the bottom of the fraction. And that's another one of these indeterminate forms. In fact, every time we compute a derivative, if you've been paying attention to this, the top and the bottom are both going to 0. So we want to figure out what can we do with this limit. Is there anything we can do algebraically with this limit? You might be tempted to try to take a log or something to try to get this h down. But the trouble is that you can't just take the log of this part, right? You have to take the log of the entire thing. And that means at some point you have to take the log of this minus this. And if you think back to our week on log rules, we said this is one of the ones where we don't have any log rule for that. We do not have a log rule for the log of a minus b. And at the time we cautioned you that you shouldn't try to invent your own. And that's because there is no such log rule. So algebraically, we are stuck at this point. And when we're stuck, we do the next best thing, which is we look for some numerical evidence of what this limit is. That is to say, we'd like to actually try plugging in values for h into a calculator or a computer and see what this limit might equal. We'd like, in particular, we'd like to see if the limit exists. And so that's what we'd like to do now. We have an applet for you to experiment with plugging in smaller and smaller and smaller values of h. So please try that applet and see if you think that this limit exists. That is to say, is this quantity approaching one particular number as h gets closer and closer and closer to 0? <clears throat> 